Join me as I show you how to creatively use light leaks in After Effects. It's going to be quick, it's easy, and it's gonna take your videos to that next level. Hey everyone, my name is Cameron with Motion Science and today we're talking about light leaks and how to use them in more cinematic ways to make your videos look even better. What exactly are light leaks? Simply put, they're these beautiful streaky and dreamy patterns you see in videos, often caused by light passing through a camera lens. Light leaks are a fantastic way to add some cinematic flair to your videos. They can enhance the visual appeal and they can create a sense of nostalgia. So here in After Effects, I've got some motion graphic footage coming towards us. This could be footage that's shot, it could be motion graphics, whatever. But what I see most designers doing is they turn on the footage that we see here, like these light leaks, and they set it to add, like so, and they call it good. And they say, hey, there's the film overlay, isn't that cool, it looks awesome. I mean, yes, it looks good, it's better. It kind of works with the color scheme. I would probably advise you to go in and do some color correction to the light leak to blend it more into the, the purples and blues that we see here. But we can take it a step further, and that's by combining different light leaks and overlays together. Sometimes I will use just one over a piece of footage, but a lot of times I like to combine them. So that's what I have here. So we've got an edit here. This is a, a Machine Gun Kelly music video that I uh, thought was pretty cool. And I thought we could enhance it by adding some film light leaks to this. So my process is you can see I've added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different light leaks to this short clip here. Now I could, like I said, just go in and add one light leak and call it good. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a transition here from this shot to this shot it would be a perfect place for a light leak. So what I added was a light leak that's set to scale and I play around with the placement, the timing of it. I could actually have it so that at this frame here, this pops on and maybe I will back it up just one frame. So we can see here if I play it back, it's a nice little transitional element. Again, this is set to add. Sometimes I play around with scale. So this one, I actually dropped it down to a 50% scale, but we can make this even better by now adding a second one on top of it. So we're gonna add these film sprocket light leaks that you see here. And they've got some nice little type that happens here on the side. That's looking pretty good. And I can add one more element here with this big X to uh, kind of combine all of it together. And you can see this bottom element adds some really nice film grain texture over it. So those three together, this transition now looks like this. It's looking really nice, right? Now, I feel like at this point here, we could add another one that goes at the same time that this layer five is kind of transitioning off. So we'll turn this one on. And this has got some nice like scribbles, some marker scribbles here. So that's looking really nice and let's move here. And then at this point, let's go ahead and bring another one, another two of them on. So that's the first one. And you can see it's just some nice texture over the top here and it's creating a nice transitional moment again. And I'll add a second light leak over the top here to add to this transition, really nice. And then we'll add one more here at the end just to add some texture the end. And this is just another piece that's got some nice film grain happening, some white specks that kind of pop up around the screen here. And we also have some, some moments here on the side with some type and some little triangles pointing upward. So if I play these back, it's already looking more interesting, right? We've got some nice light leak textures happening. And again, at this point I could call it good, but I want to take it to that next level. So Let's go into our next example here. And for this example, what I've done is I've gone in and I've added some effects. So if I was to turn off all of these effects, I'm gonna select all, hit E for effect, and turn all of these off, like so. Then hit E to collapse them. Uh, you can see what I've done here. So if I solo this first one, it's got a lot of red and those type of orange tints to them yellow and red, but uh, I wanna make it just straight up red. So I tinted it to a, a red color here. So this is with, and this is without, right? I'm just kind of reducing some of the color that's in there. It's, it's too much. At this point, the film light leak is just too much over the top. So I'm gonna reduce some of it by just adding a simple tint. And I'm also gonna do that to the one below it. And I'm gonna turn that one on here. 
So now those distracting yellows, it's just this red tint to it and it looks a lot more unified with the footage. Now this one on the top here, this I kept exactly the same, but this next one here, the small one at the bottom, I added a CC toner to make it a more grayscale value. So you can see here that this X has a lot of yellow in it, but by adding the toner, it brought it to a more black and white tone and it really brings that X out towards the camera, towards the audience by doing that. And we'll go into this one. Same thing, I added the exact same effect. So I'm re reducing the reds and the yellows and the oranges and just making it a straight black and white element like this, which is really nice. For this one, I reduced the uh, saturation and the lightness, just like this. So that's the original kind of bringing it down. I also repositioned it. So originally this one was sitting over here like this, and I saw an opportunity to really take advantage of this negative space here. So I repositioned it and I turned on a reptile to repeat the edge back over to the side here so that there's not a, a hard cutoff of the texture. And that's looking pretty cool. And this one above it, I'm gonna add a CC toner to it to remove those pinks, right? Everything has got kind of this, this red tint, this red tone to it throughout or it's just straight up black and white. This one, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna remove those pinks and just bring some red tone, a little bit of orange tone there as well. And this last one we've got here, same thing, just adding a little bit of tone to it. And what's really nice, this one's super subtle and you can see it's just adding this almost like halation effect to the edges here. A halation effect is a film effect. I'm just adding it to the edges here. So back this up here and let's go ahead and just play this. And you're seeing that it's already way more unified in its look. So if I go back to the original here and also put it to fit and I play this back, yes, there's some nice film overlays, but there's too many colors happening, right? There's a lot going on, especially if you look at the original edit. The original edit here is very desaturated. Yes, there's some nice reds in it, but everything else is very almost monochromatic and very desaturated. So adding in like these teals and these greens and these bright oranges, these blues down here, it's just way too many colors, right? Like these pink and purples that we see here. Well, in this next example, just by adding some simple coloring, we're bringing everything back to more of that desaturated look with the red tints in there as well. So it's, it's getting really close, but we can take this one step further. And that's in our example here, example C. And what I did here was I took the original edit and I just found moments where these edits are happening. So there's an edit happening here. And then I saw an opportunity here to add something. So what I did was I added a shake effect to this footage. And again, I used Sapphire. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that I preach about how powerful the Sapphire plugins are. If there's only one set of plugins you can have, it's Sapphire. So I split the clip. And if I was to undo this, uh, all I did was, this is my original piece, I just hit Shift Command D to split that clip and then went a little bit further, Shift Command D to split it again. And that's how I created multiple clips here without affecting the edit. So to this little tiny clip here, I just applied a shake preset. And if I solo this by itself here, you're gonna see it's it's very subtle, but it's it's a very little shake, right? And if I play the other two clips around it, that's all it is. Just this little shake and it's where the transition happens. And it's the same thing here with this moment. This is another transition. And I'm just adding some shake into that as well. And we'll play through that and shake. And that's all it is, right? Shake and shake. So here's the final result of applying the light leaks uh, to our edit. And you can see it's a completely different story. The light leaks have added a new level of depth, uh, nostalgia and a visual appeal uh, to our edit. So thanks for joining me today. I hope that you got something out of this light leak tutorial. I love using light leaks and I use them as often as I can when it is called for in the particular piece. If you like seeing content like this, I highly encourage you to check out my School of Cinematic Motion Design over at motionscience.tv. It's a program that is chock full of workshops and courses just like this on cinematic techniques that will take your motion design to that next level. Definitely check it out. As always, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. 
I'll see you in the next video.